Welcome to the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. Let's play a game of Name That Device. Leave a comment down below if you know what this device is. Like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching. Hey guys. Welcome to another Windows 10 video? So I'll let this sink in for a little bit, but this is not Windows 10. Matter of fact, this isn't Windows at all. This has nothing to do with Microsoft. What we're looking at here is the Windows 10 GUI or visual pack that is installed on a Debian-based system. So this is the sister or the twin of the Debian XP system, the free XP system that we reviewed. This is the Windows 10 version of that system. Basically what the system is on the back end is Ubuntu. And as such, it runs all the Debian-based commands. So it will run the apt-based commands, which means that it's the more friendly version of the Linux operating system. Let's start by clicking start here so we can take a look at the actual operating system. And you'll notice that it looks a lot like Windows 10. It actually functions a lot like Windows 10 if Windows 10 functioned 100% all the time. So this operating system is very stable uh, because it is based off of our Debian-based system. It does have all the same update package, configuration, and everything else that goes along with what we would find in a Debian-based system. It still runs the App Store. You could still install Snaps. It still runs flat packs. It still has the ability to... Uh, you know, run Chrome and Steam and all those other fun things. At this point, I think we've overplayed the installation of snap packages and flat packs on the Debian based architecture. So I'm not going to go through that in this operating system or this video. I think this video is actually going to be relatively short. And I'm just going to focus on the functionality of this Windows 10 looking Debian package. Let's take a look at some of the settings in here and see what all these links do. So if we click category, we could change between the alphabetized and the category view in the start menu, just like we would in Windows 10, only I think this is actually better than the Windows 10 version. Uh, we could see the user profile. We could click on documents and open up a documents folder. And interestingly enough, you could see that the folder structure looks a lot like a Windows system. I mean, it's not identical. It's not a one-to-one -one copy or clone of the Windows system, but they did a good job here, and they have replaced some of the naming convention to actually try to make it more friendly, more familiar for people that are coming from the Windows operating system. I think they've knocked it out of the park. I really do think that this looks very Windows-esque. And I think if you're coming from a system that is running Windows, this might be an easy way to transfer instead of upgrading to Windows 11, just keeping on with Windows 10, at least with the Windows 10 look. Now, it's not for everybody, but for people that got really used to Windows 10, that you don't want to move them to Windows 11, and maybe they just use it as a browser-based system, something they use to search the internet, to go online, to purchase things of that nature, this would be a perfect transition because people who don't know that this is different from a file system perspective, may have a real hard time telling the difference between one operating system and the other. Let's take a look at what the packages look like on the actual system. So if we click on the start menu and we look through here, we have Dolphin, which is the file manager. That's basically the equivalent on a Windows system as like File Explorer. That's the, the actual file manager. Dolphin exists on the other system well as well, the uh, FreeXP system or the uh, Debian XP system that we did the review on. We could take a look through the rest of this and see what else is going on in the system. We're going to see that we have the KDE Partition Manager installed. We can continue on. We have Console, which is the actual um, terminal. And if you right-click on this, you can actually pin it to the menu. And you can see it appear on the right-hand side, just like you would in a Windows 10 system. If we continue to scroll through here, we could see we could do uh, Open Connected Devices. We could do Print Settings. We could go into the software center. So if we click on the software center, this will open basically the apt versions uh, software center that we would find on Debian system. So basically like, like Ubuntu, this is the Q4, Q4 OS revision of the same thing. 
So if you go in here and you decide you want to install like Mozilla Firefox, we could actually install application, right? So you just click on install application and then it will download the application and install it on the system. And you'll notice that at least on the Q4OS version, this looks very familiar, doesn't it? So the package actually contains some really cool stuff, right? So we're going to install the Mozilla Firefox. We'll just click on next and we'll click on install and this will install it on the system. And if you're coming from Windows, I mean, obviously, you're going to have to get used to the fact that you're going to have to use the software manager portion here to do it through the GUI. But if you get used to that, you can install all the applications that way and you get that very familiar look just like Windows 10 would give you. Now, once it's installed, once you go into the start menu, it exists in the start menu. So if I want to now use this as my browser, I could just pin this and I have it on the right hand side just like I would in Windows 10. Some of the other familiar portions of this operating system are actually pretty interesting, right? So we can continue to scroll through the menu system here. We have a variety or multitude of different things that we could check on. Uh, we have the screenshot capture utility. We have a system monitor, which if you look at the thing, looks a lot like the task monitor that we would find in Windows or task manager. So if we click on that, it actually opens a monitor to actually take a look at the system and what's running. And this is actually a fantastic system monitoring tool that's built into Linux. But it is wrapped in the wrapper that makes it look like it's a Windows-based application. So we can go to Applications and see Applications. We could go to History, which shows us CPU network memory utilization. We can see the processes that are currently running in the system. And if I decide that I don't want one of these things to run, I, I could click on it, right click and end process just like you can in Windows. So it gives you a nice friendly look and function similar to what you would have in Windows. And like Windows, I could actually right click on this and I could choose pin to taskbar. So then when I close this, it still exists that if I wanted to, I could just click it and open it. And you'll notice one thing about Linux that's much better than Windows is when I click this, it's instantaneous. There's no lag whatsoever. And you can argue and say, well, it's because this machine's got a lot more horsepower. It's a lot faster. It's got, you know, it's, 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 it's way quicker than the other systems. But you'll see that we have four cores total on this actual configuration. So we can see the four cores. So we have nothing going on. We can see the used physical memory on this particular system is 1.5 gigs. Now, I know what you're thinking, and I'm thinking the same thing. You're thinking, is that 1.5 gigs the same as what the host is currently using to run this particular system and everything else that's running? And you'll see here that it's, it's not because we're running 20 gigs of actual memory right now being used to run the video. We're running the image. There's a server running in the background. There's two or three web browsers on this system running. A whole bunch of stuff is on this system. We can see network utilization. We can see CPU utilization. And you can see over here that we have 1.5 gigs. So it doesn't show, it doesn't really translate between one and the other. So let's continue on here. Now that we've pointed that out, I again, just look at how snappy it is. It's so fast. If you use Windows, you get amazed by that stuff because it is so much faster than Windows. I did a whole video the other day on the Talon operating system which should be released on the 25th, I think it is, next Tuesday. Let me double check that for you real quick, but I think that's next Tuesday. Yeah, next Tuesday, the 25th, that's the Talent Operating System informational release on that. I did a full video on the a debugging of that actual uh, installation package. And during that process, I gotta tell you, uh, I was so it was just so laggy. It was so slow in comparison to the Linux-based systems. So opening things up in this system feel lightning fast right now in comparison to that other OS. So another thing we should install on the system is maybe the update manager, but we should take a look to see how that works on the system. Do we have an update manager already on the system that we can use? And does it look like the Windows update system in order to update? So far from what I can tell, it doesn't look like there is one, but let's just type in update. I don't see an update manager installed on this system. So let's take a look, maybe in system settings. Is there anything in here for updates? 
I don't see anything in here for updates. I can't, I guess we could do a real quick search. Let's do update. Yeah, there's nothing in here for updates. So let's install the update manager on this thing next. I'm going to see that it downloads the update manager. And we're going to see, again, that familiar look of a Windows pop-up box indicating that it can install the actual update manager. Okay, so that's complete. Let's click on next and finish. Successfully installed. Now let's go in here and see if we could find the update manager. Definitely can't. Let's see where it exists. Okay, so I actually hit the Googles for this one to try to figure out specifically what's causing this. And interestingly enough, it seems as though the update manager itself will not it doesn't appear in the menu system. Where it will appear is down here in the taskbar, what's there is an update available. They claim that that's the process for updating the system, that it only shows the updater when the update is available. Now this system hasn't been on in a couple of weeks. And I don't know if I trust that as an outcome. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the console and we're gonna run the command logic to see if there are updates available. Okay, so I could try to save you guys from some of the tippity tapping on the keyboard. So I'll just hit enter here. See if we have any updates available. Yeah, so it says there's 220 software updates available. This is the update manager. See how we see it here? Software updates. So it is working. It just takes a little time to download the actual package. You could force it with the sudo apt update, which is what we just did here. Now, where this is good is the fact that we do have updates, so now we can see what this looks like. And it does look like the Windows Update icon for the updates. So once they do become available, they will pop up. It usually takes a little time. If you want to force it, it's just sudo apt update as we've covered in the other systems and the other videos. If you're running an older build, it's sudo apt get update, but it still does the exact same thing. You could actually do the sudo apt get update on here and it'll still run. It's just preference. If you're probably under the age of 30, sudo apt update. If you're over the age of 30, you probably have gotten used to sudo apt get update. Both of those things do the same thing. The key difference in the two commands is that the sudo apt get update works 100% of the time on everything. The sudo apt update will only work on the newer systems. So if you've gotten used to the app get, it works fine. If you've gotten used to the apt, it works fine. But if you're on older systems, you got to use the apt get. Okay, let's see how this GUI looks when we click on the install updates. We could choose to not show this dialog box again. So in the future, you could just click on yes and it'll just do it. And if we look, this does look very similar to like what we would expect on, you know, some kind of a Windows based updater. If we click the little drop down arrow here, we could see the percentage, the actual installation process. But I'm guessing that the vast majority of people that would use this as a replacement for their Windows 10 machine, when Windows 10 becomes end of life, do not necessarily need to know the additional details. They're probably people that are older that really just want a familiar operating system and want to continue to use just their web browser, maybe uh, a way to run like uh, word-based processing things like um, something that looks like Office, like Libra, for instance, or OpenOffice, or honestly, I would tell you to check out FreeOffice for home use because that looks just like Office. And as the name suggests, it's free. And once the updates are complete, and if you check the time between the last little clip there and now, I, maybe a minute has gone by, two minutes tops. So two minutes can install 220 updates. When was the last time you installed 220 updates on a Windows system in two minutes? So let's just click on OK, and the system should reboot. Well, so that's one caveat or one limitation that is different between this and a Windows system is it suggests a reboot, but it does not force a reboot. So let's close out of the command logic here and let's close out of the software center and let's take a look real quick at the start menu and restart the system. 
So just click on start. And then we have power. We click on that, and this looks real familiar, right? So we're just going to click on restart. And this is going to bring us to a splash screen where it's going to give us 27 seconds to make a de decision or a different uh, choice. This is probably one of the only times that you could really see the Linux operating system point out inside of that Windows kernel. I mean, obviously, outside of the fact that you can't run EXEs. So let's just click on OK. And just like that, it's back up. So we'll have to adjust the screen real quick, but I wanted to kick it off again here so you could see that it was 11.06 when it came back up. So it probably took about 45 seconds, 35 seconds to reboot after 220 installed updates. So first off, I want to apologize about the change in the screen size. It's VMware being VMware. It's not the actual Q4OS system. The drivers that are included in the Q4OS system work with VMware. They work with Intel-based chips. They work with AMD-based chips. You could still install the NVIDIA drivers. You can still install the uh, ATI or the AMD-based drivers. All that stuff works fine. It's The issue is that I have a defined setting on a monitor um, because the monitors are actually 4K, and I can't do 4K in the actual VM. So as a result, I run 1920 uh, by 1080. But sometimes it gets a little funky on reboot because I can't set that as automatic. It won't auto adjust to the screen size because of the 4K di uh, display settings. So as a result, I end up with this type of scenario where after reboot, sometimes it shifts the actual size. So the biggest it'll go right now is what I got displayed on the screen. So luckily it happened towards the end of our video here. So it shouldn't be that much of a big deal. So we installed 220 updates. It took about 30 to 40 seconds to come up. In that 30 to 40 seconds, it applied all 220 updates. Uh, we didn't blue screen. We didn't have to roll back. We didn't have the round ring of waiting. Uh, it is a lot faster than Windows in every way, shape, and form. The interface where you click is faster. The loading of applications is faster. The reboot time is faster. The update time is faster. If there is an issue and you have to hard boot the system, you don't have to worry about system defrag and check disk and everything else because it's not an active file system. It's a flat file system. So it is a really good OS, and this Q4 OS actually is pretty dope, especially with these wrappers on them. So let me know down in the comments, what do you think about Windows 10 Debian? Uh, Q4 OS wrapper version of Windows 10. Let me know. I, I'd be really interested in, in hearing your comments down below as to what you guys think of this operating system. Again, it's not for everybody. I really do think that the OS itself is probably really good if we gear it towards specific types or specific demographic or, of people. Just the people that want that familiar look, they want stability, and they want support. I think this is a great option. Let me know down below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching the Generic Tech Support YouTube channel. Find the content of this video at https genericTechSupport.com forward slash hashtag channel.